SpaceX just shocked the space world. A mini space shuttle has been trapped on Earth for 20 years because it was too big for any rocket. But SpaceX's new 18.6-meter Falcon Heavy fairing changes everything. Dream Chaser can finally fly, but not on the rocket it was built for. While one company makes excuses, SpaceX delivers solutions. But will Sierra Space abandon their original partner and risk burning bridges with aerospace giants? The answer could reshape the entire space industry. Let's dive right in, right? Here's what the aerospace industry won't tell you. Dream Chaser isn't some half-baked prototype sitting in a lab. This is a fully operational, flight-ready spacecraft that's been gathering dust for 20 years. Not because it doesn't work, but because the rocket industry failed it. Picture building the world's most advanced sports car, then discovering every road in the world is too narrow. That's Dream Chaser's nightmare. At 9 meters long and 4.5 meters wide, it's engineered to perfection, but trapped by everyone else's limitations. While Dream Chaser collected cobwebs, SpaceX's Dragon made over 40 trips to the International Space Station. NASA paid SpaceX billions, essentially betting America's space future on a single company. Why? Because Dragon actually flies and Dream Chaser sits in storage. But here's the twist that changes everything. SpaceX just solved Dream Chaser's biggest problem without even trying. Let's talk about what makes aerospace executives lose sleep at night. Dream Chaser doesn't just compete with Dragon, it obliterates Dragon's limitations. Dragon splashes into the ocean like a 1960s space capsule. Recovery teams scramble with ships, divers, and hours of complex operations. Precious scientific experiments sit in salt water while teams race against time. Temperature-sensitive research gets destroyed. Contamination ruins months of work. Dream Chaser? It glides onto Kennedy Space Center's runway like a commercial airliner. Scientists access their experiments within minutes, not hours. No ocean recovery, no weather delays, no contamination, no drama. The numbers are staggering. Dream Chaser carries 5,500 kilograms to the space station, nearly matching Dragon's capacity. But attach the Shooting Star cargo module and interior space explodes to four times larger than Dragon. It burns non-toxic fuel, making ground operations safer. It's reusable like Dragon, but with airplane-style reliability. On paper, Dream Chaser should dominate space logistics. So why has America's most advanced spacecraft never left the ground? The answer lies in a partnership that became a death sentence. Sierra Space made a bet that's destroying their company. They trusted ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket. On paper, it seemed bulletproof. ULA had decades of experience, government backing, and promises of reliability. But here's what went catastrophically wrong. Vulcan was supposed to debut in 2019, then 2020, then 2021. Each delay pushed Dream Chaser further back in an endless queue of broken promises. The excuses became legendary, engine explosions, certification nightmares, supply chain disasters. Meanwhile, SpaceX was launching Falcon 9 rockets almost weekly, setting new records and proving reusability actually works. By 2024, the situation became desperate. ULA and Blue Origin filed complaints with the FAA about SpaceX's launch frequency. Instead of innovating, they tried slowing down their competitor through government regulation. It was embarrassing. The military noticed. Over 20 critical defense missions stuck waiting for Vulcan. Penalties piling up, trust evaporating, contracts under review. But while everyone watched ULA stumble, SpaceX was quietly engineering the solution that could save Dream Chaser's future. January 2025, a single photograph surfaced online that sent shockwaves through aerospace circles. SpaceX was testing a massive new Falcon Heavy fairing, 18.6 meters tall, specifically designed for oversized payloads. This wasn't announced with press conferences or marketing campaigns. SpaceX simply built what the industry desperately needed while everyone else made excuses. The new fairing keeps Falcon Heavy's width, but adds crucial height. Suddenly, Dream Chaser's dimensions aren't a prison sentence anymore. Here's what makes this development absolutely brilliant. SpaceX created this solution 
while their competitor couldn't even make their basic rocket work. It's like designing a better lock while your rival struggles to make keys. The Department of Defense helped fund this development, recognizing its strategic importance. Translation, the U.S. military was hedging their bets against ULA's failures. The aerospace industry's burning question, will Sierra Space abandon their sinking partnership for SpaceX's lifeline? Sierra Space signed contracts for seven Vulcan missions. These aren't simple business deals. They're complex agreements woven into military and government requirements. Breaking them means legal warfare, massive financial penalties, and burning bridges with aerospace titans Boeing and Lockheed Martin. ULA's parent companies control enormous chunks of the defense industry, cross them, and Sierra Space could find themselves blacklisted from future contracts worth billions. It's corporate suicide, but staying loyal to Vulcan means watching Dream Chaser rot while competitors dominate the market. Every month of delay costs millions and destroys credibility. The financial pressure is crushing. Falcon 9 launches cost $67 million. Vulcan launches cost over $100 million. That $33 million difference per mission could bankrupt Sierra Space's business model. There's another brutal reality. SpaceX treats Dragon as their premium customer. Dream Chaser would become just another payload, competing for launch slots with paying customers. Would SpaceX deliberately slow roll Dream Chaser to protect Dragon's monopoly? But the technical challenges make everything worse. Switching rockets isn't like changing cars, it's like performing heart surgery on a fighter jet. Dream Chaser was engineered specifically for Vulcan's thrust profile, vibration patterns, and separation mechanisms. Falcon Heavy generates completely different forces during ascent. The fairing separates at different altitudes. Even electrical connections are incompatible. Sierra Space would need to redesign critical flight systems, run thousands of new simulations, and conduct extensive testing. We're talking 18 months minimum, assuming nothing goes wrong. But here's the terrifying reality. They might not have 18 months. NASA is getting impatient. They awarded Sierra Space a cargo contract expecting regular Dream Chaser flights by now. Every delay damages reputation and threatens future contracts. Blue Origin's Orbital Reef Space Station depends on Dream Chaser for cargo delivery. If Dream Chaser can't fly, the entire commercial space station program collapses. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starship development continues advancing. Within a decade, Starship could make both Dream Chaser and Dragon obsolete. Time is running out for everyone. But there's a darker possibility that explains ULA's behavior. Remember September 2016? A Falcon 9 exploded during routine testing. Elon Musk publicly suggested possible sabotage, specifically mentioning a nearby ULA facility. The allegation was never proven, but it revealed the toxic relationship between these companies. Since then, ULA's CEO, Tori Bruno, and Musk have exchanged increasingly hostile public comments. Business competition became personal warfare. In this environment, could ULA be deliberately delaying Vulcan to prevent Dream Chaser from succeeding? The evidence is circumstantial but troubling. Every time Dream Chaser approaches a launch date, new Vulcan problems mysteriously emerge. ULA prioritizes military missions over commercial partnerships, maintaining government favor while Sierra Space suffers. It's corporate warfare disguised as technical difficulties. Industry insiders whisper about patterns too convenient to be coincidental. Engine problems appear days before Critter would give Sierra Space complete control. They could prioritize Dream Chaser missions, integrate systems properly, and eliminate partnership conflicts. But acquisition would cost billions cash motivation, and track record of bold acquisitions. Gaining Dream Chaser's unique runway landing capability while eliminating a potential rival? It's strategically brilliant. Imagine SpaceX controlling both Dragon and Dream Chaser. NASA's cargo program becomes a SpaceX monopoly. Competition dies. Innovation stagnates. But the most radical solution involves international partnerships that could reshape global space. What if Sierra Space makes a similar move? Australian aerospace companies have cash and ambition. The Australian government wants strategic space capabilities. Dream Chaser's runway landing makes it perfect for international operations. Sierra Space could bypass American regulatory complications, ULA's delays, 
in SpaceX's priorities by partnering with Australia. Launch Dream Chaser from Australian territory using local partners. Land at Australian airports. Establish independent operations outside U.S. control. The implications are massive. American aerospace dominance crumbles if key technologies migrate internationally. NASA loses influence over commercial space programs. National security implications explode. Would the U.S. government allow Dream Chaser to escape American control? The answer could determine the future of global space power. Every week that passes makes Sierra Space's position more desperate. NASA's patience expires. Blue Origin's orbital reef timeline crumbles. International competitors advance. SpaceX's new Falcon Heavy fairing represents the last realistic hope for Dream Chaser's survival. But accepting SpaceX's help means admitting ULA failed, burning corporate bridges, and potentially triggering legal warfare. The clock is ticking toward a decision that could reshape American aerospace, abandon the failing partnership that's destroying Dream Chaser, or watch America's most advanced spacecraft become history's most expensive museum piece. What happens next will determine whether innovation or corporate politics controls America's space future. So here we are. SpaceX's new Falcon Heavy fairing just handed Dream Chaser a lifeline after 20 years of waiting. But this isn't just about one spacecraft. It's about whether innovation wins over corporate politics in America's space future. Sierra Space faces an impossible choice. Abandon their failing partnership and risk everything, or watch their masterpiece become the most expensive museum display in history. But here's what really keeps me up at night. If Dream Chaser finally flies on SpaceX hardware, does that prove the old aerospace giants are finished? Or will ULA's delays force America to depend on a single company for our space ambitions? The next few months will answer those questions. And honestly, I think we're about to witness the biggest shakeup in aerospace since SpaceX first landed a rocket. What do you think Sierra Space should do? Take the SpaceX deal and burn those corporate bridges or stick with ULA and hope for a miracle? Drop your thoughts below because this decision could change everything we know about the space industry. Thanks for joining me on Space Corps. If stories like this get your pulse racing, you know what to do. Until next time, keep looking up. The Raptor 3 can literally blow itself up in 10 milliseconds. Elon Musk just dropped this bombshell truth. SpaceX's most powerful engine, 280 tons of thrust, has a deadly startup flaw. One tiny timing mistake, and boom, total destruction. But here's the shocking part. This nearly killed SpaceX's Mars mission. So what's this insane timing sequence that's so dangerous? And how did SpaceX solve this nightmare before it was too late? Let's dive right in. August 2024. SpaceX drops a photo that makes the entire rocket industry lose their minds. The Raptor 3 engine looks impossibly clean, like someone stripped away 90% of the parts. Tony Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, publicly calls SpaceX liars on Twitter. No need to exaggerate by showing a partially assembled engine. Every aerospace expert agrees. This has to be fake. Four days later, Gwyn Shotwell ends the debate with one devastating video. That exact same fake engine firing up with a perfect blue flame. Her brutal caption, works pretty good for a partially assembled engine. The industry goes silent, but nobody knows the terrifying secret hiding behind that clean exterior. Then came the confession that changed everything. Replying to a post on X, Elon Musk dropped a bombshell that sent shockwaves through SpaceX. Very complex startup sequence. Insane timing precision is needed to avoid blowing up the engine. Wait, the world's most advanced rocket engine can literally explode during startup? The CEO of SpaceX just admitted their masterpiece is a death trap? This wasn't some minor technical issue. Musk was revealing that every single Raptor 3 startup is a game of Russian roulette with a 10 millisecond trigger. You blink your eyes in 300 milliseconds. The Raptor 3 requires timing precision 30 times faster than that human blink. Miss that window by even a few milliseconds? The engine doesn't just fail, 
it detonates. But how can the most powerful rocket engine ever built be this close to self-destruction? The answer lies in what SpaceX calls full-flow stage combustion, the most dangerous way to power a rocket ever attempted. Most engines work like a garden hose, simple, predictable, safe. Raptor 3 works like a controlled nuclear reaction happening 1,000 times per second. Here's the death sequence. During startup, two massive turbo pumps must spin up to speed that would shred a car engine. These pumps force liquid methane and oxygen, both colder than the surface of Mars, through microscopic channels at pressures that could crush a submarine. Then comes the killer. The pre-burners must ignite in perfect sequence within 10 milliseconds. The fuel ratios have to be exact, the pressure curves must match perfectly, and the timing cannot be off by even a microsecond. What happens if something goes wrong? SpaceX engineers have a term for it, hard start. That's their polite way of saying catastrophic explosion that sends metal fragments flying at supersonic speeds. One SpaceX engineer described it to me. Starting a Raptor is like trying to light 33 sticks of dynamite simultaneously while they're all connected by invisible fuses. Light them in the wrong order and everything explodes.